So today I'm going to be starting a new trailer build and for this build I'm going to be using this 3500 pound idler axle. It's an axle we had purchased a few years ago for a project and never used. As you can see it's kind of dirty and a little rusty from sitting on the side of the shop. It is a brand new axle but being that it's been sitting outside in the weather for the last two years I am going to take the hubs apart, clean them, inspect them, put new seals in. So I figured in this video I will show you the process of taking the hubs off, uh, repacking the bearings, installing new seals, and reinstalling the hubs. First I'm going to clean all the dirt and grime off the axle from just sitting there and then we'll get into taking the hubs apart. Alright, so I got this most of the dirt cleaned off. So, as you can see, this dust cap is damaged, so I'm not going to worry about saving it. I probably don't need to take these hubs apart, but here in the Arizona desert, rubber doesn't last long. So, with the seals, I want to make sure I got good new seals in it. So I'll go ahead and get those replaced. But as for these dust caps, I'm just gonna use the trusty claw hammer and tap them off. Now, if you wanted to try save them, a lot of times you get a flathead screwdriver and carefully go around the edge here and knock it, knock it out. Cause these caps are pressed in, but I'm putting new caps on it, so I'm not going to worry about it. So basically, all we got to do is just tap this off. Just rotate a little bit. And it's off. So as you can see, it still looks pretty good in there. The reason I didn't want to just go to town and whaling on that cap is there is a grease dirt here on these posi lube spindles and I don't want to damage that. The next tool we need is going to be some needle nose pliers so I can get this cotter pin kind of straightened out and out of the way here. So the other thing you'll want obviously with this is some rags because obviously grease. Alright so make sure you set this in a safe place so you don't lose it. I got a rag, I'm going to set it off to the side on top of a rag so I can find it. So next we got to take the axle nut off. And as you can see you can pretty much remove these by hand. So when you torque a hub down and set the wheel end plate and everything these aren't like super tight because you still want the hub to spin freely. So we'll go through that during install. But in the meantime, we'll get this hub nut off. So we got that, the castle nut. Probably doesn't hurt to wear rubber gloves. Those I don't have and I forgot to pick some up. So now, with the castle off, you can start pulling the hub off. One thing you want to be careful of is there is this washer here and then the outer bearing. So you don't want to lose those. So typically what I'll do is I'll put a rag over, I'll pop it loose like so. And then I can reach in and like that, drop the washer. Let me grab that. So there's your washer. We'll set that off to the side, wipe some of this grease off. And then the next, this you don't want to drop. You don't want to damage your bearing. 
So I'll pull the hub a little bit, stick my hand in there, grab the outer bearing. So there's the outer bearing there. The bearings obviously look good. Like I said, this axle has never been used. It's just sat outside for a few years. And I just want to make sure before I put it in the trailer build I'm going to do that everything is good with it. So we'll set that bearing to the side and then next we can pull the hub off. <clears throat> and then the inner bearing is held in with the wheel seal so we'll have to pull the wheel seal out to get that off to get that out and get that cleaned up and we are going to put a new wheel seal in just due to the age of this one I want to make sure it's good we'll also as you can see from sitting in the sun here it kind of got sun baked so when I go to put this back together and reinstall it I'll repaint the axle to get rid of all that I'll wire brush any of the surface rust off this doesn't hurt anything but I figured while I have it apart I'll clean it up and paint it so now with these spindles they're basically pretty easy just obviously wipe any grease off just be careful with your hands out near the, the threaded part. Some of those threads can be sharp and cut you. So that's pretty much it to take the hub off. Um, so if we rotate this, it's kind of hard to see. So the way these Posi or posi loop uh, spindles work is you got your greaser here there's a channel that goes through the spindle and then right here on my fingertip there is a right here at the end of the screwdriver there is a hole that comes out at the inner bearing so what these will uh, posi lube spindles do is they're going to put grease to the inner bearing first which will then put it into the hub and push it out the outer bearing to where you know you got positive lubrication in both bearings so a lot of guys will run a bearing buddy on their hubs so what a bearing buddy is is it basically takes grease and it pushes it in which, I mean, it helps if you're greasing your hubs. It definitely helps that you're doing it. But the one thing with those bearing buddies is you never know if you're getting grease to the inner bearing. So that's the benefit of the Posi Lube axles. Uh, this is, this axle is a Rockwell axle, which is owned by Dexter. Um, Dexter has the, the Easy Lube and then the Rockwell's the Posi Lube. But they both basically set up the same way to where it greases the inner bearing first, pushes it outwards. I'm not going to bore you with the disassembly of the other side. So when I go to reassemble, I'll get back to you. All right, so to get the wheel seal out, I don't have a seal puller. I got my pry bar. Easiest thing for me is I just got it clamped up in the vise here. I know there's some of you that may say this is not the correct way, but it will destroy the seal and that's fine because I'm replacing it. I just need to get it out so I can get this inner bearing out, clean it, repack it, put a new seal on. So basically all I'm going to do is stick my pry bar in and I'll find that lip and I'm just going to start kind of working it and it's starting to move a little so 
So we'll just kind of walk it around. And voila. And I got my inner bearing. So I'll get these cleaned up, get the bearings cleaned up, and then we'll go through and repack the bearings, install the seal, and then uh, reinstall the hub. All right, so I got the hubs cleaned up, the bearings cleaned up. One thing you want to be careful of, the way I remove the seal, you gotta watch the bearing so you don't uh, damage the the bearing carriage here. So, and then the other thing to remember, so this being a new axle, it really doesn't matter because these bearings and races haven't been run yet. But on an existing axle that you've been using, if you ever do go to replace a wheel seal that's leaking and you don't replace the bearings, or races. One thing you want to keep in mind is over time this bearing in this race they kind of wear to each other so you don't want to when doing wheel seals you don't want to take this bearing and then put it over into this race. You want to make sure you keep them together unless you're doing all new bearings and races and it doesn't matter. Um, but these hubs are cheap enough to where if you were going to do the bearings and races Honestly, I would probably just buy a whole new hub where it comes pre-assembled. Um, it'd be much easier, so. But for now, I'm just gonna do uh, one of these seals to basically show you. So I'm gonna pack grease in it. You can get those uh, grease packers. Um, Honestly, I prefer to do by hand. I've done it this way for many years. So basically what I'll do is I'll just take a dollop of grease and I just take the bearing and walk it around and kind of smash it into the grease. Just basically work the grease in there. Do the same thing to the other side. Smash the grease down in there. And then I'll basically just rub it around the outside. Spin the bearing. And just basically just work the grease into it. So once I got the bearing pretty well packed and my hands are still greasy, what I'll do is I'll rub some grease on the inner race here. Then I'll set my bearing in. Then I'll grab my new wheel seal here. Wheel seal, and I'm just gonna rub a film of grease around the outside and now I'll get rid of these greasy gloves so one mistake people will make is not putting in the seal correctly there's drivers for doing this again I don't have them I was just at Harbor Freight I should have bought some I did pick up a rubber mallet there but I'm gonna attempt to use the rubber mallet. Oop. So you don't want it to go in crooked like that. Let me try to make this a little bit more solid. not working we'll grab a claw hammer this claw hammer has been pretty well used there's no 
really no teeth left on it, so it shouldn't mar it. We're just gonna work our way around. Get that back in view. And then basically like that. So now we got the seal in. I'm just gonna wipe off a little bit of excess grease here. And next we're gonna take the outer bearing. And I'm gonna pack that, get that ready. That way when we go to install the hub, I have that. So let me pack that one right now. So I got that one packed with grease. I'm gonna set it to the side for now. Cause we'll need that here shortly when we go to install the hub. Now keep in mind there's, there are tools that you can use. I know some of you may say I did that wrong using the claw hammer, which I did it right the wrong way, I guess you could say. So it worked out. Um, th there are tools for this. I know you can get them at Harbor Freight, fairly cheap. That rubber mallet didn't work out, but I paid three bucks for it at Harbor Freight. You can't beat that. But I'll definitely use it to put the hubcap on. Um, so yeah, there's this video is more intended for those who have never done wheel seals to try to walk you through it. Um, it's not daunt as daunting as it seems. It's pretty simple process. You just gotta pay attention to what you're doing. The most important step is coming up next, which is installing the hub and making sure you have it uh, torqued down properly, tightened properly, so. With that, let me reset up the camera and we'll do the hub install. All right, so what I did do is I did pre-grease this uh, spindle. You never want to install the bearings dry. And the reason is, is moisture does build up in here and you can actually rust the bearing uh, to the spindle, which then makes it almost impossible to get your hubs apart. So, it's always best to smear a little uh, grease on the spindle before installing the hub. So now with the hub install, pretty simple. We're gonna carefully guide that on. You'll feel the bearing set in place. And now with the hub on, we can insert the outer bearing. Forgot to put gloves on, but that's all right. So the outer bearing, we're just gonna carefully work that. You don't wanna force it in, you want it to slide in nice and easy. Then we're gonna take our washer. We're going to reinstall that. And then the castle nut. So now there's many different ways on how to properly, you know, tighten down the hub. They got the fill and drag method, which would be basically just getting this pretty snug and as you snug it you're spinning the hub to seat the bearings and then you back it off and then tighten by hand. Uh, the process I'm going to use is what's re recommended uh, by Rockwell American. So we want to make sure the nut's loose and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to tighten it with a torque wrench to 50 foot-pounds 
And then after that initial torque, we're going to, going to loosen it and then finger tight. So basically you're going to torque it to 50 foot pounds and then loosen it and then just tighten this castle nut by hand. And what you want to do after you tighten it by hand, you'll want to insert the cotter pin in there. So if necessary, you want to, so to get the cotter pin to fit, if you want, if it doesn't fit, you want to loosen it versus tighten it to get the cotter pin in. And then once you get the cotter pin in, you'll just fold it over so it doesn't, uh, can't come out. So we'll do the initial torque here first. So I got my torque wrench. And I got it set for 50 foot pounds. So now this axle is not installed, so I'll have to hold it. So 50 foot pounds isn't much. But as we tighten, we want to periodically take the hub. And I need more hands, but you want to take the hub and just kind of give it a spin to make sure your bearing seat properly. So we'll keep going here until we get a click out of it at 50 foot pounds. So there's 50. So next what we're gonna do, we're gonna get rid of the torque wrench. and we're gonna loosen it. Because right now, if you look, the hub is way too tight, won't spin, and you'll basically burn your bearings off. Burn your bearings out, which will burn the hub out, and you'll have a wheel go flying. So, we got it nice and loose. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just tighten it by hand. So we'll just take that. That's tight by hand. The hub spins free. So now the issue I have is the cotter keyhole is right over one of these castles. So according to the instructions on the torque spec, we want to just back it off just a little bit so we can get the cotter key in. And we're gonna put it in right here. See if I can get that to rotate and then drop all the way down. So just like that. And then we'll find the end of it. All right, so I got that turned around here. So now I can hopefully Grab the end. There we go. We're just going to fold that over. And then this inner one, I'm just going to fold it in. Actually, we'll probably try to fold it that way. 
I just need to get it out of the way of the center cap here. So maybe we'll just go this way too. Because the center cap's gonna press in right here. So now the hub's on. You can see it spins freely. One thing you wanna do, it's kinda hard to do when the trailer or the axle's not in a trailer. But you wanna check end play, right? So you can get these digital or analog type readouts where you stick it on there and wiggle it and it'll tell you how many thousandths you're off. Again, that's a tool I don't have. Uh, we did that in the uh, trucking industry to make sure we got the end play right on the big semi uh, trailers. On this here, I've, had, I've always had luck, is basically just grabbing it, and if you can wiggle this thing, you do not have it set properly. It's easier to do when the axle's on the trailer with the wheel and tire on, because you can grab it, and if you can get movement, basically what you want to do, take the hub cap off, pull the cotter key out, and then just tighten this nut one more, one more notch if possible, um, depending on how much you have. But a lot of people get nervous when it comes to trailer hubs. You know, I've had customers call me and say, you know, they can grab the nut and wiggle it like this. And that's not really a problem, right? Because once we torque it down, we seat the bearing. And then we just tighten this by hand enough to where we can get the cotter pin in and this spin freely without end play, the cotter pin is going to hold this nut from backing off and it's going to hold the assembly together. Now I do recommend after doing this, you know, and changing your, your wheel seal or your hub out, is after getting it done and installed and running the trailer down the road, maybe 25, 50 miles, and get it home just jack up the wheel and grab that and check that end play because sometimes when you seat the bearing and you set this and after you run on it it wears you know settles into place it may back off just or it may be a little loose but you won't know right away but so basically where we're at now is i'm just going to put some grease pump some grease into the hub uh, using the greaser and then we just got the hub cap to install um, I'm not going to bore you with both uh, putting both hubs on I just figured I'd walk you through this one uh, so for now let me grab a grease gun we'll pump some grease in and then we'll get a hub cap installed on this So basically what I do is I'll just pump grease in just until I can see it coming out of the outer bearing. And right now I can hear it. And there we go. We do have grease starting to come out in here from the outer bearing. So that's what they mean by Posi lube, positive lubrication. You know now by greasing it this way that you have grease in the inner bearing and the outer bearing. Now I don't like to like keep pumping and just fill this cap full of grease. And the reason is, is this grease as you run the trailer, the grease gets hot and it'll liquefy. So you need it room for it to go but uh so now simple step or a lot of people find this a little hard I find it hard at times too these are a press in cap they are real snug they don't just pop in 
So using a rubber mallet or even taking like a block of wood and then hitting it with a hammer definitely helps. I've damaged plenty of these trying to put them in, um, but we're going to try not to now. But basically we'll just kind of get it pressed on by hand here and then just take the rubber mallet find the spot that's sticking out the most and just smack that side and we'll just work it around and there you go so that's how to change a wheel hub. Now the smaller axles, 1500 pound, I think, 2000 pound axles, the 5200s, the 7K axles, they're roughly all the same. Even if you have brakes, uh, brake, brake drums, doing the wheel seal and bearings is basically all the same. The torque specs may change from axle capacity to axle capacity but uh this is just a 3500 pound idler axle uh, just so you know idler means there's no brakes it's just an idler hub now with these axles one thing some people don't know and i get questioned a lot on is back here what are these for so for those of you that don't know, with these Rockwell American axles, they do come set up for brakes. So with these, uh, this tab back here, there's four on the 3500, there's four mounting holes. What this is for is if you down, down the road wanted to upgrade your axle to have electric brakes, these are the mounting points uh, for the brake backing plate. So the brake backing plate will have, it's basically a metal plate and it'll have the brake shoes and everything attached to it that you bolt to the flange here. And then you would swap your hub, your idler hub out for a drum. So this axle can be upgraded to brakes in the future if I wanted to, or if someone else wanted to, if they had one of these Rockwell axles, or even if you have a Dexter axle or another brand and it has these flanges, that's what these are for. These are for installing brakes onto it. So other than that, I'll leave a comment below if you got a question. I'll leave a link below for where you can pick up these axles if you're interested. We do offer trailer kits to where if you're wanting to build your own, let's say, little utility trailer, we do offer blueprints and kits to build your own. With this axle, I am going to be building, it's either a 5x8 or a 5x10, I haven't decided, but it is a 5 foot wide trailer. Um, I am going to be building it with all the components in our kits. I might change some of them around a little bit, but I'll be using our blueprint that we offer to build the trailer so if you want to stay up to date on that just like and subscribe and follow along but I'll be adding videos and how-to videos on that build as I go um, this is just the first step is getting this axle ready um, all I got left to do is throw the other hub on and I'm just gonna throw a quick coat of paint on it and uh, we'll go from there. I'll probably take a wire brush to those rust spots here and then I'll just use some Rust-Oleum black spray paint and just freshen it up. That way it's good for good to go for the build. But one thing I did want to point out real quick also is a lot of these new axles that they they're called cambered axles. It is a straight axle. Consider a straight axle, but it's cambered. So if we look right down here, you can actually see the axle bow, like it's bent. So 
right now I have the axle on its side. If you notice here, I got the spring hangers here. So if we rotated this, this is an under, undersprung axle, meaning the leaf springs go underneath. If we were to rotate this, like it was sitting in the trailer, you won't see the bow. So the high point of that bow goes towards the, the, the top, is, is the top of the axle. So that's one thing you want to keep in mind. So for those of you that are looking to do the springs on top of the axle, if you do get a cambered axle, you may have to get some extra spring pads and weld them on top. Which we, you know, honestly, if you purchase your axle through us and you want to do that, and you want the extra spring pads, just let me know. I'll work with you on that. Because if we do it this way, to where the spring pads here, to where the springs would be on top of the axle, this axle bows downwards, which isn't good. So I just figured I'd point that out to you. It's something to keep an eye on. If you get your ax get an axle and it's like this, it's not bent, it's designed that way. It's designed to have the bow going upwards with the springs under the axle. Now occasionally they have the axles available where the springs go on top with this camber, but usually they don't. So if you're looking to get an axle for the springs on top, just reach out to us and uh, we'll work with you on that. So...